So that gives us uh, this deprotonated guy over here. So that was our first step. We used this base to deprotonate. All right, um, and uh, by the way, that also produced water, which will just float away. Now what? What are we trying to make? Yeah. Whatever the um, right product is. This is a predict the products problem, and we're supposed to predict the final product. Um, so this might be the final product, or there might be more things that could happen. So should we stop here, or are there any other plausible reactions that could happen now? There's more reactions. <laughs> like what? Um, maybe the O could break yeah. off. Like this? Well, I don't know how. Could become right. Okay. Right. Is this a good leaving group? No. no. Leaving groups tend to be neutral or positive. So since this is negative, um, the oxygen won't break off over here. Okay. So now to the high value, are going to become cyclic? <gasps> now that's on the right track. Good. That's right. How's that going to happen? It's going to... Oxygen right. Attack, attach that's right. to the molecule could attack itself. Absolutely, that's right. Um, we actually talked about this a couple sessions uh, ago. I just took this exam. From, I just took this problem from the sample exam, so this is going to be important. Okay, so let's go through this. First of all, let's start by asking: Are there any good leaving groups around? That might be a good first step. Are there any good leaving groups? Yes. Yeah, this is a good leaving group. So, who's our alpha carbon? That carbon. Remember, it's always good to label the alpha carbon. The alpha carbon is the one that's attached to the leaving group. So, this is a good leaving group. Um, however, that won't do us any good unless we have a uh, nucleophile around. So do we have any nucleophiles in the mix? Yes. Yeah, here we have this nucleophile that we just created by deprotonating this oxygen over here. Okay, um, all right, so um, we can do that. And would this be SN1 or SN2? Two. SN2, how do we know? Because um, it's methyl. I mean, it's a primary carbon. Primary carbon. So primary can't do SN1. It's got to be SN2. All right, so let's try the electron pushing arrows for that. So we should take these electrons here and put them over here. And then we go like this. This tail should be on the negative charge. That's the conventional place. This head should be pointing directly at this atom. This tail should be on the bond, and this head should be on the atom. OK, now this is actually a difficult product to draw. So take your time when you're uh, drawing that product. Or maybe we'll just go through this together. OK, so let's go through this together. Uh, I'm going to number one, two, three, oh, four. Oh, you can't just draw it in a pretty fashion. It has to like. I'm sorry? Wait, do I'm, you do five? Uh, no, I do four. Oh, looks like can. you're on a good track. OK, you got it. All right, I said this was really hard, but oh, you no, got I it. I didn't know if you like had it. OK. No. Nope. All right. No, what, what you have down there is the right answer. So, uh, so good. Um, so let's go through uh, how well. Maybe I'll give other, everyone else some time to see if they can get that answer. Because it's going to look like a geometric figure we've already seen, right? It's not yeah. going to look yeah, like it's not going to be a random, right. random one. So the key thing here is, um, so this is what's called a intramolecular reaction, right? Intramolecular, as opposed to intermolecular. Now we know that inter means between two separate things. International between, means between two separate nations. So intra means inside one thing. So intramolecular means a molecule reacting with itself. This might seem weird, but this is something that's going to come up a lot in the course. Um, the course is not about molecules. It's about functional groups. It doesn't matter whether the functional groups are in separate molecules or the same molecule. As long as the, functional groups are, in, uh, are the right functional groups for a reaction, they can go through the reaction. So 
you have to get out of the habit of looking at the molecules and ask, what are the functional groups? Here we had a good leaving group functional group, and here we had a good nucleophile functional group. So it wasn't really important that they happened to be in the same molecule. So here we have an intramolecular reaction. If you think about it, intramolecular reactions pretty much always give you rings, because they're already linked one way, and now we're forming another link. So they have to form a ring. So this intramolecular is going to form a ring. One important thing is, are we going to break this oxygen number four bond? No. I think we talked about this in the past. Yeah. You never break a covalent bond unless there's the tail of an arrow on it. You never break a covalent bond unless there's the tail of an arrow on it. Most students would just move the oxygen over here and just cut this bond with the number four. But then that wouldn't be a ring. That wouldn't be right. All right, the best way to draw this ring um, is first to ask how many atoms are there in the ring? Well, you can count with your finger. One, two, three, four, five. Five atoms in the ring, so I'm going to draw a pentagon. Here's the pentagon. You know, one of the atoms is an oxygen. Now, you can't draw it like this. You actually have to erase this vertex and put the oxygen there. Of course, the oxygen can go in any vertex. Now I'll put in my numbers. You can number it either clockwise or counterclockwise. One, two, three, four. I think that maybe one of you had only uh, three carbons in your ring, so make sure that you have the right number of carbons uh, in your ring. Very common mistake is to lose carbons. Well, if you're numbering, you can't do that. You should always number when you're doing intramolecular reactions so that you're not losing any carbons. And by the way, we're also going to break this ionic bond, right? Because the oxygen is losing its charge. The oxygen is at the initial tail, so it's going to become neutral. And the iodide is at the final head, so it becomes negative. So now the sodium is going to move over here. So here's where the sodium is going to end up, and this is our final product. But there wasn't actually a bond between the sodium and the oxygen, right? Well, in solution, there might be some of these that are ionically bonded. However, I think most of them would be just dissolved. But it's still conventional to opt to draw them as if they're ionically bonded. Okay. Um, all right, so there's a couple of very important things we went over here. Um, first of all, it's very important to be able to see both inter- and intramolecular substitution reactions. Remember I was saying, don't focus on the molecule, focus on what are the functional groups. Do we have a good leaving group? Yes. Do we have a good nucleophile? Yes. It really doesn't matter whether they're in the same molecule or not. Um, so this is going to be attacking this over here. Also, don't stop too soon. On the test, a lot of people might have thought this was the product. Um, how did we know not to stop? As long as you have charges, you should ask if there's something good for those charges to do. Again, the charges are the reactive portions. Keep focusing on the charges. You should ask, is there anyone good? So you should say, gee, this is a good nucleophile. Uh, is there anyone good for this to attack here as a nucleophile? All right, and also we saw very important, before we could even get to the SN2 here, we had to do the deprotonation. So in general, watch out for strong acids and strong bases. If you see a strong acid, you know for sure it's going to protonate somebody first. If you see a strong base, it's kind of tricky. Um, it might act like a nucleophile, but usually it's going to deprotonate somebody. And that's what happens here, especially if you have a good oxygen around. In that case, the H, would, the arrow would be like from the H to the O minus, for instance. In which case? If it would be like an HCl, HCl connecting to O minus, connecting to the same thing, iodine, one iodo. I'm sorry, uh, like this? Or? Yeah, sure. Well, here, the arrow would still be pointing to the hydrogen, not it's away from the hydrogen. Not, it's electrons, not the proton. Yeah, it's the electrons. This is supposed to show which way the electrons are going. OK. So yeah, generally speaking, uh, I don't think you guys have seen any reactions yet where the arrow is coming away from the hydrogen. No. OK. So what um, kind of reaction is that? Which? Like, this? Well, yeah. What well, there was actually two reactions. First, we did a deprotonation, and then we did a, a SN2. First, so there was. This is just a predict the products. This is. Oh, I'm sorry, what type of problem? So, this is a predict the products. Yeah. So, the problem just gave you these two starting materials. I, I'll just show you from the sample exam. Have you guys, have you guys done the sample exam yet? So, yeah. Uh, it was uh, this one here. So, it's pretty much the same as I have on the board. So. Okay. But are these the types of problems that are going to be with alcohol? It's just like, it's the predict the product thing, but you have an alcohol in the initial substrate? So, this is one thing you can do with an alcohol. One thing you can do with an alcohol is deprotonate it, right? Because it's got a hydrogen on an oxygen. So one thing you should watch out for with alcohols is deprotonations. How do you know when you're going to do a deprotonation? If there's a strong base around. So if you have an alcohol and a strong base, don't use the base as a nucleophile. Use it to deprotonate the alcohol. That's the upshot. If you have an alcohol and a strong base, don't use the uh, base as a nucleophile. Use it to deprotonate the alcohol. So that's one thing that we have to see. We didn't have to worry about that when we were just looking at haloalkanes, because haloalkanes can't deprotonate. There's no hydrogen on the halogen. 
Um, that's the new thing that we have with alcohols. Here we do have a hydrogen on this electronegative uh, atom, so we have to watch out for that deprotonation. So notice that um, SN1 and SN2 don't necessarily stand by themselves. They might have to be preceded or followed by other helping reactions. I think we've already seen in the past, we've seen a lot of examples of when SN2 and SN1 is followed by a deprotonation, right? We've done a lot of examples of when an SN1 or an SN2 is followed by a deprotonation. Well, now you can see they can be preceded by uh, a, be preceded by deprotonation, like we have uh, over here. Notice that when you deprotonate something, you make it into a better nucleophile. Deprotonations make things into better nucleophiles because it gives them negative charges. If you deprotonate something, it leaves it with a negative charge. So the purpose of putting in this space is to give us a better uh, nucleophile. So this is an important problem that you're pretty sure to see on the test. You want to make a, make a note of this and go back to it. Does it, does it make sense? Yeah, yes. Okay, so that's only one of the things we can do with alcohol. So should we find something else we can do with alcohols? So let's see. 